Lara, so now Lara's titled this podcast for us because we're coming into this, we had no name for this podcast. We'd like a list of five names in a Google Doc, and now you have the name. You've created the name for this podcast. So first off, thank you for doing this. You're welcome. And thank you for coming up with the name of the podcast. My pleasure. All I'm right. here to serve. So have you recovered from Lobster Fest? Jonathan, I um, yes, I've definitely recovered. <laughs> It was a big day for us. It was a big day for the chamber. It was a stressful day, but it was awesome. <laughs> Did you? What was the final idea, like number on like how many people came to Lobster Fest? Uh, so we had the fire chief there and the police chief, and I think collectively they decided at any given point we had about five thousand people. Um, at our high point, we had about seventy five hundred to eight thousand. And you were expecting how many? I was over prepared for around 2,000 people. And this was a makeup date too. It was. We originally had it scheduled for Saturday. Um, but being down on the harbor, we weren't only watching the rain. Um, we were watching the wind. That's a really windy area being right on the water. And with having all the tents and stuff, we needed to be sure that things yeah. weren't going to blow away. So um, although Saturday at about noontime, the sun was shining down yeah, on me. <laughs> it was a weird day. It was a weird day. But we made the right call because it was still about 30 mile an hour winds down there so you can do it again next year of course absolutely are you going to prepare for seven thousand people to show up i am i am going to prepare <laughs> for that that's amazing that's yeah. awesome we were lucky we got a 10 of a day uh on sunday yeah, yes, which i think you know attributed to all the extra people that came um but I was psyched. We had people from all over, all right. over New England, actually. Really? And I found out after that we were listed in AAA Magazine um, yeah, as editor's that. pick for something to do, which I have no idea how that happened. It must have been Louis the Lobster. Louis the Lobster. Louis the Lobster, my cute yeah, son. For the, yeah, for those that didn't see the, insta the Instagram for the chamber, Louis the Lobster was all around the community. Yep, he was. He did, he, was. did he enjoy being in that lobster costume? He did. Well, the first week he enjoyed it. And then after, he was like, Mom, do I seriously have to do this again? <sighs> yeah. Oh. Um, so we made it fun. I think one of our last stops was um, to Cornerstone Real Estate Brokerage. And um, she had him doing some fun dance moves. So then he thought it was cool again. Yeah. It's all about engaging the kids. Yeah, like, <laughs> so for those who don't know you, you're Lara Bright, the Chamber Executive Director. So what's the next big event you're doing? Well. <laughs> <laughs> what's the next What's the next? Or, 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 or what's the next big Chamber initiative? I know well, I want to ask you about walkability in a few minutes. But okay. what's kind of the next thing that you guys have going on? Sure. So we're definitely planning Lobster Fest 2020. <laughs> um, as you know of, um, from being former president, we kind of moved away from being an events only Chamber of Commerce, yep. although Marshfield is a tourist community, we um, wanted to do some more meaningful work and kind of change our focus to a little bit more um, making changes in the community yeah. and really supporting the business owners and the residents. Yeah. Um, so we don't have any other big events on yeah. the docket. Uh, one small thing that's coming up is Marshfield Merry Days. Um, and our idea behind that was just to get all of the holiday events that are happening in uh, Marshfield and advertise them in one place. That's good. You know, so there's Santa at the pier, mm -hmm. the Molly Fund does the tree lighting. Um, last year, the Chamber and a lot of local businesses in Webster Square gave yeah. uh, money to light mm -hmm. up the town green. Yep. So we're going to do that again. There's also a holiday light show coming yeah, to Marshfield that. at the fairgrounds. Um, that is not a chamber-sponsored event. You know, the chamber isn't running that, yeah. um, but we are in partnership with them on that one. So that gotcha. should be fun. Gotcha. So Webster Walkability, I know this is a big initiative of you and Alyssa, who's the president of the chamber, that mm -hmm. to make Webster Square more walkable. Take us through that. Like, what exactly is it? So Webster Square Walkability, um, just for the name um, to start with, we when we were trying to come up with a name for it, you know, obviously Daniel Webster, Webster Square. Um, and when we say Webster Walkability, people instantly think, oh, there's sidewalks going everywhere in Marshfield. Um, you know, you walk, you walk on sidewalks, but that's right. not... Uh, what it is. We would love to put sidewalks everywhere in Marshfield, um, and we're working on it. Mm -hmm. I think that's probably phase four. Oh, um, so it's a multi-phase project. It is. It is over. I mean, I think it's probably going to be 
five to 10 years realistically really? before we That's get awesome. everything done. Um, but we're taking it in phases. We're working with the DPW and uh, town officials, selectmen, um, to exactly what you said, make downtown Marshfield safer for families. Mm-hmm. Um, we're trying to slow down the traffic. And we're all, um, also trying to make it more aesthetically pleasing. We'd love to see some more green space. Really? Some more flowers. Um, some more picnic benches. We want people to hang out. I mean, if you go to places like Hingham, Derby Street, right. um, in the brand new Merchants Row in Hanover, I don't know if anyone's driven by yeah. there. But they have, um, you know, they have kids activities. They have yeah. cornhole boards. They have, we want people to hang out. Yeah. Um, in, yeah, you know. was there like a, hey, we wanted to kind of have this type of vibe that we saw from this community or we saw from this downtown? Was it like, hey, we, we could do something like that? Yeah, definitely. I think it, we, you know, pulled from, you know, people always talk about Situate Harbor and how, mm-hmm. you know, it's kind of just one street. You walk down, yeah. there's restaurants, there's shops, you can cross the road safely, the traffic is slow. Um, but Marshfield Center isn't really set up like that. So I've had to be pretty creative. Really? Um, you know, in placing new crosswalks. Mm-hmm. And um, we also have a new stoplight maybe going in. Really? Um, yeah, the chamber funded a traffic study mm-hmm. um, right at the intersection of Dairy Queen, the skate park, where you <sighs> take that turn into Marshalls. Mm-hmm. So we're hoping to see a light there in the very near future. And um, we had two businesses so far sponsor crosswalk signs. Mm-hmm. It was Levitate. Yeah. Um, and Tiny and Sons Glass, cool. Peter Brown, um, they they sponsored those crosswalk signs to help make Marshfield safer. So that's great. Cool. So so this is a so what's the next process? It's the hopefully traffic light there, and then other stuff down the road, or. So we're looking to improve the parking situation down in Library Plaza. So although it's called Webster Walkability Library Plaza, yeah, I mean um, because it ca- it mean. It connects, in a right? Way. Yep, it's um, it's all one project. Mm-hmm. So um, you might have seen or driven over those speed bumps in Library Plaza. That was part of our mm-hmm. slowdown traffic initiative, and those are working. Uh, we've heard really positive feedback from the business owners there. So um, with Library Plaza, we need more parking. Obviously, a lot of people know about the Levitate backyard and how that's brought a lot of people. Um, mm-hmm to Marshfield, which is great, uh, but we also need places for people to park. Um, We need to make sure that our businesses there have spots for, you know, Peppermint Twist and Live Creative Cuisine, uh, Veronica's Sweet Cakes. We need to make sure that people can get in there too. So we're working with a lot of different entities to uh, repave and Mm -hmm. restripe the parking there. We're hoping to add 10 to 20 parking spots. Wow, pretty pretty exciting. Is there other areas of town that you're you're looking at too, not just downtown? Is there... Other areas you think like, hey, we could do something here? Um, As part of Webster Walkability, no, but we can always, we're always looking for things to do Mm -hmm. around town. At one point, the chamber had talked about um, putting foot washing stations at the beaches and having sunscreen stations. I know when I was present (laughs) way back in the dark ages, Brent Rock was kind of the talk of like, oh, we need to do something with Brent Rock and then just never happened. So, well, um, so that actually is part of why we did Lobster Fest. Um, because Brant Rock is mm-hmm. kind of a hidden gem yeah. down there. And um, Mike DeMeo, the Harbor Master, who's actually our newest board member of oh, the chamber, cool. um, he does a lot of work down there with the harbor and the harbor walk, and he's a really great grant writer, which has been awesome yeah. for the town. And um, when we had talked about the ideas of Lobster Fest, we wanted to showcase how awesome Marshfield's, yeah. you know, how the harbor and the beaches and all that. So that was the reason why we chose that location. And that actually worked out great because everyone was busy that day. (laughs) And (laughs) we brought a lot of business to Brant Rock. You mentioned Mike DeMeo. And um, one of the cool things about the chamber, I think a lot of sometimes people have the stereotype of chamber just being a bunch of bankers and insurance guys in a smoke-filled room. Mm -hmm. Uh, This, you're, you're, the Marshall Chamber is very diverse, it is. especially in, in the board. Take us through like some of the, I mean, you don't have to maybe spotlight certain people, but mm-hmm. the, the variety of businesses and people that are on the, that are involved with the chamber and the board itself. Sure. So um, as you, I'm glad that you actually brought that up because, you know, uh, any awesome team is made up of diverse yeah. people. If you have a group of people that's all the same, you're never going to get anywhere yeah. because everybody agrees, right? Um, 
So we have, obviously, Alyssa Reed, who's our president. Mm-hmm. She um, is in financial services. We have a business coach. We have a mortgage broker. Mm-hmm. We have an event planner. We have um, someone that's on the Coastal Coalition mm-hmm. uh, in Marshfield. That's the other good thing about our board, too, is that um, – a lot of these people are, are involved in other things in right. Marshfield, so mm-hmm. they all bring, you know, different areas of expertise. Um, who else do we have? We have myself, <laughs> of course, <laughs> with a fundraising background. You're right. Um, we have, we do have a banker. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's really diverse because it's, it's it men, women, yes, older people, younger, younger people. people I, yeah. th- I think that's what makes it really what the what's really cool about the chamber board mm-hmm. itself. I mean, everybody on the board, either um, you have to work in Marshfield. You don't necessarily have to live in Marshfield, but you have to, you know, you have to work in Marshfield. Mm-hmm. So everybody's invest- around all the time. You're invested somehow? Yes. So what's the role of the executive director? It's, 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 oh, it's, a, ti- it's a unique title because I have that it role. Is. It's like your your jack of all trades yes, in my case. But yes. But let's, what's the role of Lara Bright, executive director, Marshfield Chamber of I, If you ask my husband, I would say I call myself the keeper of all things. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's at home and at work. Um, you know, I get new members. I um, try my best to engage all of our mm-hmm. members. Um we support the members with their, you know, their business. Mm-hmm. I always try to go and visit people and say, you know, what are you looking to get out of this? Um, I connect them with other people that can either be their clients or people that can mentor them. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do all the administrative functions. <laughs> and the list goes on and on. And, and you're not doing this 40 hour. You're not doing it. It's not a full-time job. Granted, I know there's weeks where you're probably putting 80 hours in or 40 hours in. There's mm-hmm. probably weeks you're not putting True. Tons of hours in. Right. Um, I know that's a big misconception around here. I Mm -hmm. actually am contracted for 10 hours a week. Um, (laughs) This is not a full-time position for me. This is a labor of love. Um, My husband and I are both from Marshfield. Our kids go to school here. I grew up here. um, And I really, I enjoy working with everyone to make Marshfield the best place it can be. So what type of business is is the chamber looking for? Is there a certain, is there a business that you guys like, hey, we'd love to get these type of people onto our into the organization. Is there someone that you is yeah. there a missing missing fit? A missing fit. Um would love a few more landscapers. Really? Would love uh, more contractors. With you know, plumbers, electricians, yeah. those type of people. Um <clears throat> we have a really diverse group. And there's a lot of awesome businesses that have come to Marshfield. Uh, recently, we just got the Slack Tide mm-hmm. guys, yeah, um, and they're coffee roasters. That's super cool, yeah. super fun. Um, all kinds of different stuff. Am I looking for anyone specific? No, but I would like more contractors. I guess is okay. is the answer. So uh, you, I know you guys do you know do some of the big stuff, but I know you guys do monthly events. You guys have like your monthly board meetings, which people are, are welcome to attend. I know you guys do your after hours events. Mm-hmm. Stuff like take talk, talk talk to people about about that, what they can do, what what the experience at that. Sure. So some of um, the programs that we offer, um, we have our quarterly after hours, which we're actually starting to expand. So mm-hmm. we're having one. This month, actually, October 23rd, it's at Work Local, where my office is located. Mm -hmm. Um, It's from 6 to 8. And that's going to be a highlight of all the awesome businesses that share that space with me at Work Local. Um, In that, I hope I don't forget anyone, but in that building, we have um, McDonough Nielsen Insurance. We have Alice's House, the nonprofit. Um, They have an office there. Yes, they do. Um, Twin Griffin Advisors. Okay. They're in that building. Advisor Assist. Styles Law, that's the other one. I don't want to forget anybody. Um, so all of the, we're all kind of doing this together as a group. Mm-hmm. And um, we're always looking for hosts to host our after hours. If anyone's interested, please contact me. Gotcha. Um, but as far as our programs, um, we have, uh, one of our newest ones is called the Blue Team, yeah, which is actually pretty exciting. Um, that's a partnership between the Marshfield Chamber and the Marshfield Police Department. Mm-hmm. And um Obviously, it's called the Blue Team. That stands for not only yeah. the blue color in police, but it mm-hmm. stands for Business Leaders United in Emergencies. Ooh. What's we made that, that too? We made that up ourselves. <laughs> um, so nice as most of you know, um, Marshfield is a coastal town, mm-hmm. and we get hit with hurricanes 
flood. We get we, you know, we get knocked pretty good. Right. We get all of our, our great snowstorms, nor'easters. Um, so the police were looking for extra help. Um, again, as some of you might not know, our police department is a little understaffed. Um for how many people we have in Marshfield mm-hmm. and they're working on that and I hope that they get some more officers right, soon. Right. But when an emergency comes, uh, that's when they really feel the effects of not having enough help. Right. So Artie Shaw, um, who's the leader over there, I think he's lieutenant. Sorry, yeah, Artie. He's a lieutenant. I know. Okay. All right, Artie. Lieutenant he, he, Shaw. He, and, he's, and, he, and he runs the emergency operations Yeah, the EOC over there. Um, so I had met with him and we came up with this plan. So what it is, is um, Road to Responsibility mm-hmm. is one of our partners in Sanctuary Church. Um, those are our two shelter locations. Wow. And um, we also partnered with local supermarkets, CVS, to get uh, care items for people, pet food, you know, toothbrushes, mm-hmm. just simple stuff that you would need if you needed to leave your house. So that will be... Um, before they open shelters, like the high school, I know they do Furnace Brook, right. they have shelters at the high school. Before mm-hmm. they open those, yep. we're kind of the intermediate for a smaller storm mm-hmm. um, before they. Yeah. You, know. you mentioned the schools, and I know you're also on the school committee. I am. Yeah. The internship program. Yes. That's, that's something that you guys do, which I think is really, really cool. Mm mm-hmm. um, now that you're on kind of both sides of it, mm-hmm. t- talk about that and like talk about like how great it is not only just for the students of all, but also for the businesses. So the internship program is awesome. Uh, that was one of the things that got me really excited about mm-hmm. uh, joining the chamber yeah. and you know working. Um, that I got to participate and work with the students and the business owners. Um, I think we're going into is this our tenth year? It's either nine or ten. We're we're I. Th- if not tenth, it's close. Okay, we're close to our tenth year because it was before my my time. Okay, like I th- yeah, yeah. So we're coming up on ten years. I'm not sure if this is ten years or nine years, um, but it's a very successful program. It's the last six weeks of school. The seniors don't have to go to school; they have to go to work. Um, so Ashley Stanford is our liaison yeah. through the high school, and we work with her. Um, she's also a board member, so. Yeah. We work with her to place these students all over Massachusetts. Um, We have kids that work with police departments. We have kids in bakeries, hospitals, all kinds of different. We had a catering company. Um, Mm -hmm. Last year, one of our scholarships went to uh, um, a girl that worked at South River Vet. So the airport, that was also one of my other favorite ones. We have a video that you guys actually made for us. And yeah, Aiden, he was our airport intern. And it's awesome to see these kids. Some of them really thrive. Mm-hmm. And it's it's one of those, when I leave those, it's one of those days that I'm like, yes, this is awesome. I'm so glad yeah, that I, I have I, this job. I've been to the night where they present and talk about it. Yep. It's so cool hearing the stories of the kids, but mm-hmm. also from the business too, saying like, hey, you know, this was a great experience for me as well. And a lot of times those kids end up working there that summer or something like that, or when they come back from college from break, they're they're at those places. Right. That's a really good point because a lot of times when I approach business owners and I say, well, you know, will you take a, an intern? And they'll always say, college or high school? Mm-hmm. And I had, you know, of course, it's high school. Yeah. And they're always kind of hesitant because they feel like the high school kids aren't going to take it seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I've found is that 90% of the time, the hosts get more out yeah. of it than the kids do. They bond, they bond, they make these really special relationships. And like you said, they yeah. do end up hiring yeah. um, the kids for, for summer jobs, and then they come back yeah. and work for I them. I think from my perspective, someone that has, that has college interns and high school interns, you want to make it fulfilling for mm-hmm. them. But So you're just super concerned about making sure that they're not just doing busy work or something like that. They're actually going to get something out of it, and you're going to get something out of it. Mm-hmm. And every kid's different. So I think that's probably the most difficult part about trying to, when recruiting businesses to get interns. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, it, you know, it's a big deal. But the six weeks, it, it really flies by. I actually want two interns this year because the chamber's really? so busy. I um, I took last year off because we were able to place all of our kids. And, um, and then I was you, sad. How many kids are usually getting? Is- um, so two years ago, we had 60. Uh, last year, we had about 40. Wow. And, That's um, crazy. Yeah, we'll see so what we get this started, year. I think when we started, it was like eight kids? Mm-hmm. Yep, I remember <laughs> Laurel saying that. Um, yeah, I think it was eight. It was eight or nine kids yeah. when you first started. So That's wild. Program's growing. Kids love it. 
Well, we also have um, Citizen of the Year and Business Leader of the Year. Yes. That um, we started this this year. That, um, when I was present, that was Citizen Year was my underrated favorite event. Uh, yeah, it's it's awesome. I love it. it's, it's awesome. We go back to how awesome Marshfield is and how awesome the people it, are. It, it, it like it really. I, it was one of those events that was like I think people like didn't realize how fun it is. It's such like it's a really good night honoring someone. Who's yeah, it's a really rude. feel good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a feel good event. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Um, with the chamber being a business organization mm -hmm. last year, I said, you know what, we're going to bite the bullet and we're going to do citizen of the year and business leader of the mm -hmm. year. So last year, um, Chief Tavares won our citizen of the year. Mm -hmm. Yay. And then um, Chris White from Road to Responsibility won our first business leader of the year, which is awesome. So, so I'm deserving. looking forward to getting those nominations again. That starts... When does that start? I think we start Soon. on eight February. Yeah, February. You're right. February. February. Yeah. Um, now you guys do some political work as well because you have to engage your, you know, your local politicians from your selectmen and town administrator to your reps and your state senators. Talk about some of the work you guys do on the political side. You've talked about events, stuff mm -hmm. in the community, mm -hmm. you know, working with kids. Right. There's also that side of it. Um, so the interesting part about the Webster walkability is that is that's a government that's government yeah because <laughs> it's it's roads and uh mm -hmm. you know all that stuff so with our political team um has kind of put a lot of their focus mm -hmm. there there's a lot of stuff that comes up in marshfield of course um one thing that i can think of off the top of my head is this whole heat smart marshfield yeah. um you know mm -hmm. there's a whole team with that they're actually presenting at our board meeting tomorrow morning um so we get involved a little bit in um, some of the political stuff. I know that you were our political liaison when yeah, you were junkie. on the chamber. Yes. Um, and we still depend on you, Jonathan, for uh, I'll be filming. Around. I'll be around. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Um, for filming and keeping us up to date. I know I can always count on you to yeah. for answers to my questions when I have them. So getting reps, we're going to wrap up in a little bit, but let me ask you a couple fun questions. Sure. What's the if you could, when you started this job, what was it maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago? When, when two, years. Get, two years. Oh, ago? We're over two years, two years now. Ago. I'm going on What year piece three. of advice would you give to Lyra Bright day one that you know now? What's the one thing like? Learn might, how to say no. Really? Yes. Learn how to say no. Learn how to say no. Yes. What's, what's Delegate. The, delegating. What's the, best, what's the best part about being the executive director of the chamber? I get to see so many things. And I get to meet so many people. I love people. I love people. Um, I get to <laughs> encourage people and, you know, tell them they're doing a good job. I get to bring it, it's I get to bring a good energy to, you know, people when they I do the ribbon cutting. So I bring the big scissors and then I get to, you know, which do cut, by the way, which do cut. They'll which, actually cut your finger off. They're actually um, not fake. So not a toy. Yes. <laughs> um, What's. I, all right. Well, what's the the part that I wouldn't say hate, but the part that you don't enjoy the most? My phone never stops ringing. No. <laughs> um, I think the administrative <laughs> side of it right. is not. I do not enjoy that. Did the chamber figure out their storage issue? <laughs> oh, like, that. I feel oh. like I feel like a common theme throughout my presidency, yeah. and even afterwards, was storage of stuff. Storage of stuff, yes. And now that we have Lobster Fest, we have so much stuff. Um, we do have a storage unit on 139. Um, is it the one that Alyssa and I got? It is. It is. <laughs> you still have that storage unit. I thought we got rid of it. Um, no, we didn't get rid of it because we still need it. And now we have more things. Um, Sarah Nobles from Mono Mono Boutique, she's on our board. And her and I took a field trip to the storage unit recently. And um, we cleaned it out. And we actually repurposed a lot of signs for Lobster Fest, really? which... Yeah, it was good. Saved There's us a lot, a lot of, money. of history in that. In that, in that there sure is. I'm like, oh, look at this. Look what I found. Yeah, when Treasure I chest. When I first got involved, it was the chamber was very events heavy. Mm -hmm. So I mean, anything with a fest at the end of it, we did. Yes. So there's probably a lot of artifacts from those days. And there sure are. There sure are. lots of plates, lots of napkins. If anybody needs some silverware, some plasticware, you let me know. Popcorn maker. Oh no, that's not in there. I don't know if we. I know. I don't think we. I don't know if we rented one, but we had all okay. the supplies. There's some coffee. Uh, yeah, coffee. Yeah, coffee, coffee things. Coffee things. Yeah. Um, all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so, if people want to get involved with the chamber, where do they go? What can they do? 
You can find us in so many places. Um, you could email me directly. My email is albraid at marshfieldchamber.org. You can visit our website. That's marshfieldchamber.org. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, now on this podcast. Yeah, um, <laughs> you're the first one. You can call MCTV. You're, you're going to recruit everyone in the chamber to do this podcast. Well, you know what? I'm actually really excited about this because this is something awesome that I can offer my members. They can come and talk about their business, yeah. and it's a way to get their name out there, their brand, and I'll let people know what they offer, that's why which is awesome. That's why you're the best, Larry. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so, so much, Once again, Jonathan. thanks for doing this, and also most importantly, thank you for giving this podcast a name. No, let's talk business. Yes. <laughs> All right. We're good.